Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to the Dyson Sphere program. Where last time we started launching our solar sails into orbit, and now today, we're going to beat the rest of the entire game, and build our Dyson Sphere. So it's gonna be a long one, gonna be a crazy one. So remember to leave a like, and let's get started. And as a super quick heads up, I'd highly recommend checking out the playlist, link in the description to see the whole playthrough, because this is like the end of the end game, brother. But anyway, what are our goals for beating the game? Well, tech-wise, we only have one goal, to get 4,000 of the universe matrixes, i.e. the final science cube. And then technically speaking, we beat the game. But you better believe I'm going to be building a Dyson Sphere as well. So quite lofty goals, but we don't have a lot of tech left, so today's going to be mostly building. What we need to do is we need to produce a billion of these small carrier rockets. These are what actually build the Dyson Sphere. Then we need to make the Dyson Sphere stronger by unlocking this a bunch of times. Aside from that, we can make antimatter with this tech. And the antimatter leads to antimatter fuel rods and then artificial stars. We can literally build ourselves a sun. And they provide 75 megawatts of power, which is huge. So we absolutely want those. And then finally, we get into the science and then we beat the game. So order of operations is I actually went ahead and I unlocked quantum printing technology and that gets us the Mark III assemblers. So by just using a logistics tower and a couple of the Mark IIs, we got the Mark IIs automated and we have, you know, a couple hundred of them floating around. So first step, GG easy done. Next step is we're not gonna get into the rockets just yet. We need more power. So we're gonna work towards the artificial stars. And to do that, we need some antimatter. And the antimatter is made in a particle collider and makes hydrogen and antimatter, but uses some white dot thing. Photons. And I think the way we get photons is by using the ray receivers here. So I'll just grab one as an example. Put that down literally anywhere. Please. Please. This is getting busy, brother. But yeah, put this bad boy down. We put it to photon generation mode after we get the tech, and then those will start to make the photons for us. But that also means we need a ton of ray receivers, so you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna go to another world for them that is literally covered in them right now. And that is Gappa Delfini 4, because this is our logistics world for our entire playthrough. So all the items from all the other solar systems come here, and all of the items leave the solar system from here as well, including batteries, which we've been using as our main source of power for all the other solar systems. And yeah, we also have ray receivers for days, but we'll be making more to make photons. Speaking of, there we go. So if we just click on one of these, literally just click on photon generation, and okay. It looks like we just build a belt from the ray receiver, and off we go. So pretty straightforward. Well, this is probably exceptionally excessive, but you know, that's kind of how we roll here. But I have literally surrounded the entire world in photon receivers. So now we're getting like a billion of them per minute. And we have our drones taking them to an interplanetary tower where we're gonna take them to the main world and start accelerating them. Also working on the next tech because we are moving and grooving pretty quick here and the photons don't seem all that crazy. What we just have to do is build one of these crazy spaceships, just like so and simply feed the photons in here, and we're good to go. And now with the easy part done, we have to get to the more difficult things, the antimatter fuel rods. Oh yes, because how this whole game works is we started with hydrogen fuel rods, pretty simple. Then we got to deuterium, which we're using now, and then the final one, which is the antimatter fuel rods. These things are crazy, and they take a lot of resources, specifically the orb. The Annihilation Constraint Sphere. So this is something I was just researching, research complete, and we're building them over here. They're actually not that complicated. It's just like two items, right? But they're expensive items. And the machines are super duper slow, like 4.5 per minute, yikes. So I just built a ton of Mark III assemblers and they're going into the box for now. Hopefully this makes a lot of them. Hopefully we have enough antimatter. <laughs> we're just gonna have to see how it goes. So, how do we make the actual fuel rods themselves? Well, we need the hydrogen, we need the antimatter, 
the spice balls, and some titanium. Okay, actually not too bad. Because what we can do for this more complicated chain is we'd have this tower here demand these. Then we have that there, so that's great. And then this can also export the antimatter. Yeah, it can be as a supply. Cool. And then we just have these guys built everywhere. Yeah, so this goes this way down to about there. The hydrogen and antimatter will just straight up move from A to B. And that's done. And then finally, we grab the orbs and they come in that way. And then suddenly I realize everything's gone wrong because this won't work here. Oh, okay. We need four items into this machine, so complete redesign is in order. Well, not a complete, complete redesign, but had to be changed quite a bit. That's a lot more inefficient. So we only have one row of these. The and I guess it's not a total disaster. We only have one row of these, which might prove to be a problem, but it's okay. I got this tower that's bringing in the stuff for the spheres to bring in the titanium as well. That comes in this way. The rest of the stuff comes in through this way, and the export finally goes this way into this tower and can supply our entire solar system with all the antimatter. And also, we are now powered on antimatter, which is fantastic. But the main thing, is gonna be powering our entire solar system with these artificial stars. We now have the power of the sun in its mini form. Oh no, <laughs> those are really expensive. Okay, yeah, we can't make that right now unless we just yoink a bunch of items from off of our belts and then literally craft a star in our hands. Just Dyson Sphere things, you know? Bruh, this looks freaking cool. Let's just set one up as a temporary thing. Wait, where's my star? Hello? It needs fuel. Here, have the fuel, my brother. Go, go. It doesn't go. Does it need an arm? Have your arm. Have all the fuel in the world. Make me a star. That is freaking radical. We've literally just made a small sun. That is cool. That is very, very, very cool. That's probably the coolest thing I've seen in this game so far. What are the stats? 75 megawatts per doodad. Alrighty. And it's looking like the burn rate on these antimatter fuel rods is very, 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 very slow. Which is also extremely good because we can't make them very fast. Power wise, <laughs> even on our home world, we're almost making a gigawatt. You can still see the huge spike read on the power graph just with one little artificial star. Yep, these things are super, super good. And man, it's a little weird looking at like power data in this game because it's in megawatts compared to like Satisfactory where like 75 megawatts is just like one manufacturer. But here it's like, brother, that's like a lot. Like 10 of these bad boys could pretty much replace this entire planet's power. That is wild stuff. And the main thing is whenever we set up a new solar system now, all we have to do is bring a couple of these bad boys and send over some antimatter fuel. And these will easily jumpstart any new factories we make. So since we're gonna be needing a lot of these, I just ran some spaghetti from all over the factory and we have the stars automated. So by the time we come back here, we'll probably have like a hundred artificial suns, which is gonna be amazing. <laughs> Imagine a whole planet covered in artificial suns. That would be nuts. I will probably run out of antimatter fuel though pretty quick, so I... And we'll see how things go. Anyway, that is our first big goal done. Check mark GG easy. Time to get to the actual difficult part, making a Dyson Sphere. So we need the rockets now. Let's get the research and what's going into these. So we need the rocket silos to ro launch rockets towards the sun. Okay, we'll probably automate those as well. And then the main thing is we need 50 kabillion small carrier rockets. And they take the blue chips, which are hyper expensive, deuterium fuel rods, which are just honestly really annoying. And then finally, drones? What are those? Ah, the Dyson Sphere components, which is again, just relatively expensive. Okay, get ready, son. Soon you shall be consumed. And now through the power of spaghetti belt weaving, we have the silos automated as well. So now the silos and stars are going to the tower over here. Cool, we got 20 freaking artificial stars, amazing. And we'll just let these build up. Okay, so before we get into silos, before we get into automating, we have to figure out how to deal with 
the Dyson Sphere. So with the solar sails, that's all the little gold dots surrounding the star right now, all we had to do is add in these orbits. So we just add an orbit, boom, that's a new orbit. That's why we have all these crazy orbits going on here. For the sphere, what do we do now? Let's add a new layer first up. Let's just make the sphere like normal. Something like that might mess with it a little bit. And then what do we do at this point? Well, we need those rockets and the rockets make nodes. So that's a node, that's a node. Oh boy, <laughs> we have to do a lot of clicking here, but okay. So we just click wherever we really want and make whatever shape we really want. Then we build a build path and we kind of cordon these little areas off. Okay, and that's what makes the sections of the Dyson Sphere. Very cool. So we just do that, there we go. I think the more nodes you have, that means you'll have more power. I could be wrong on that though, I, I really don't know. But yeah, we'll have a bunch of nodes going through like just the general nodes of this radius. And then all the solar sails that are floating around, they will enter and fill in the gaps in these squares. Yeah. And then we just do that across the entirety of this shell and we win. Very cool. Oh yeah, there is this section in red up here. That's a little bit of a problem. Well, that's just because we don't have enough research. So I'm researching the Dyson Sphere stress system and there are several levels. Like I did one through four, but there's five levels. So we still need one more. And yeah, that will get us our final section of the sphere. So then for now, we're just gonna make a pretty basic sphere and we're just gonna go through all of the natural node points here and connect everything together. After 20 million years, it's all filled in and it's all ready to go. This actually took like half an hour to do. This is crazy, man. But we have all the nodes built and now we just have to fill it all in. So back to our Dyson Sphere planet here. And we really need to get the rockets automated so that all of these sails enter the Dyson Sphere and don't just float around the star and die because it's kind of a waste of literally all of our materials. So I brought over a bunch of rocket stations here. Start building them. We need probably a lot of these. So we'll start with like, I don't know, 10, something like that. I, don't, I just don't really know. Okay, let's build one here, one uh, here. Oh, they clip together quite a bit. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that was a blatant lie. That was driving me nuts. It needs to be centered now. Okay, so there we go. And let's just check the stats in here. Like, what's going on? Open editor. Five per minute. Okay. And we need five... What? We need 51,420 rockets to make the structure of the Dyson frame. And these... E it, it, and each silo launches five per minute. Ugh, what? Wait, that means we can calculate how long it will take to make the Dyson Sphere. Okay, well let's just set up the rest of our rocket silos. Then we'll kind of do the math on that. So we got 12 built here. That's kind of the ideal amount I'd like to have. But if we have 12 silos that can launch each five per minute, and we need 51,000 rockets launched, these numbers don't seem to add up well. So 12 times five is 60 rockets per minute and 51,420 divided by 60 is 857, which equates to a little over 14 hours. 14 hours. Okay. And that's if the, all these are launching at full speed, by the way. <laughs> um, uh, ooh, that's a tall order. Again, the rockets, pretty extremely expensive. Yeah, and thinking things through here, there's no way we're gonna be making 60 rockets per minute in the solar system, or even in our current setup. All of the items we're making right now are making things like logistics carriers, the interplanetary towers, the Mark III assemblers right now, more cannons, artificial stars, like the stuff we're making is getting used up. So I think what we need to do <laughs> is do something a little extreme. We need to find a whole new solar system and turn it into a rocket factory. I think that's the only way to get this done even relatively quickly. And you know what? If we're setting up an entire solar system to make one thing, 
we are not going to be jumping from solar system to system. Instead, we're going to get universe exploration. So what this will do is it will tell us what kind of uh, stuff is in each solar system without having to go to it. And then this is like for all systems. So you know what? Let's just go straight up level four. So then if we go into the solar system view here, we'll be able to click on like, say, the Sargas system here. And we'll be able to tell what's going on in there which will help us out a ton. There are some very specific things I want in a solar system too. A main one being, I want sulfuric acid lakes. So you guys have been telling me in the comments for a last, oh my God, a freaking, what? There's a spider on my hand. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, you guys have been telling me in the comments for the last thousand years that there are solar systems that have planets that have sulfuric acid lakes. And if we have one of those kind of planets, that will save us a million hours on oil production setups. So now we should be able to take a look. Pulchum, whatever. It has optical grading crystals, very cool. Organic crystals, fire ice, a lot of good stuff in there, actually. Extremely good. It has three planets, nice. Not exactly what we're looking for. <laughs> There's the sheet system. We kind of already know what's here. Just a bunch of sheet. And what about this one? 73 Gruy. What do you have, sir? <gasps> That's what we wanted, brother. Sulfuric acid oceans. Spin form stuff, cool. Fire ice and oil, all right. This is looking very, very promising. There's a gas giant too. So that's all of our deuterium as well. What is this world supposed to be? Ice field world? Ocean type? Okay, you know what? We straight up need to go over here. This is the mission critical place to be. Hopefully this planet is not hyper garbage. So system 73, what treats do you have for me? What a gross looking rock. Oh, but there it is. Sulfuric acid in an ocean. That is not exactly what I expected. I thought it would be like literally an ocean. It's just like ponds of it. That's all we need. We can get like infinite sulfuric acid from there. So you know what? Stop complaining, kids. All right, moment of truth though. How's the rest of this solar system? Please be a lot of items, man. Okay, that's a decent chunk of items. 42,000, 42 million iron, 36 million copper, Good, good, good. All of the essentials. Not a lot of coal, but we have oil to make coal, so that's not a big deal. Fire ice. Perfect. Fire ice makes graphite. Spin form stuff. What does spin form stuff do? Do, 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 do. Makes the nanotubes? Oh my god. This is the chosen solar system. This is the one. And wait a second. 34 million iron and 36 million copper is on this one planet? All of the resources, pretty much, in the whole solar system are right here. That's weird. Planet Ocean World? Whoa. Whoa, this is where all the spin form stuff is. In the oil. We. Thank you, research. We'll check out other stuff later, but I've never been to an ocean world. Where is it? It's right there. It's literally just an entire planet covered in water. What? Oh, no, no. There's, like, literally one island fantastic and then the rest is just water hello wait how do we even get resources here if it's all water we can't build do we have to put down like a foundation first okay we got a couple guess we'll test this out i have no idea if this will work it's better not destroy the resources or else i'll be mad okay no 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 it just raises them up above the water so we're gonna have to dot this whole planet in little tiny islands and then transport things with drones Okay, this stuff looks awesome too, neat. Oh yeah, and finally the last planet is a gas giant, right? Yep, so we have the gas giant. Again, that's all the hydrogen and deuterium. And then some randy like ice world. We've seen one of these before. Ah, and of course it has all the fire ice, along with titanium. All right, so that's not like a big deal. Yeah, honestly, this is gonna work out. It's actually in fact perfect. We'll just turn this into the factory hub world of the system. We'll set up some artificial suns here, and pff, we're good. But first, we're back from outer space, because I want to do one last project before we, you know, build a solar system. <laughs> and I want to try and automate rockets, at least to some degree, for our Dyson Sphere. 
Because right now, all the solar sails are just traveling around and then they just poof out of existence. So we're wasting resources. So if we could even start the shell in some small way, it'd be super, super, super efficient. And we could use any spare resources that might be around this planet. So hey, let's try it out. I already got the solar sail started here and made a bunch of room so we could get building. Let's rock and roll. I know we need the solar sails for the rockets, but what else do we need? Oh boy, yeah, the memes. So we need the Dyson Sphere components. Those need a billion frame material. All right, well, we'll just set up a logistics tower for that. Sales, we got that. Cool, that's step one. Step two, deuterium. All right, we could just send some over from our other factories. And then blue chips. We are almost certainly gonna, yeah, no. We will set up a new factory for blue chips because, oh boy, dude. They are slow, slow, slow to make. Also, we're out of pink crystals. Oh boy. I'll do the troubleshooting later. But for now, let's get building. So we'll grab you. We'll start building over here and go the other way. Line things up with that nice tower. Thank you. And off we go setting up this system as we do any other. We demand the resources. We build the belts. Sort our materials. And then copy everything 100 million times. And then once we have one system, we make more, more unlimited parts for unlimited Dyson Sphere components. Oh, and I guess I automated some more deuterium as well. Eh, why not, right? Oh, but I didn't automate the blue chips. Instead, we're importing them. Uh, just because we have a billion of them right now, and I'm a little lazy. <laughs> but with all those parts, we have our rockets automated, and soon they will be a flying. Already, we have quite a few stacked up. 2,000! It's pretty good. Who would have guessed in two solar systems worth of factories, we'd actually have a couple materials lying around? Crazy. So we got the rockets, and it is time to fire the missiles. All of them. Towards the sun. <laughs> Isn't it kind of weird? All of our efforts through the whole game is just to launch stuff into a sun. Well, I guess not into the sun, but around it, but you know what I mean. Anyway, let's watch. As our first of 51,420 missiles set for launch. Ah, oh, yeah, bud. Ah, oh, yeah, bud. If only there's a sound effect, but man, this looks so cool. It's so weird. They, <laughs> they kind of look like server racks. Ah, oh, dude, that's awesome, though. Check it out from our space view here. <laughs> yeah, off they go. Flying all over the place. Beautiful, brother. Beautiful. And then, yeah, they kind of just pick, seem, they seem to pick nodes at random. And there they go. The building has commenced. Wow, what a transformation, dude. And all the solar sails just floating like stars throughout everywhere. That is so cool, man. Oh, I can't wait till it's complete. All right, though, a couple things. Since that was running for eh, about four hours, I have noticed our rocket production has slowed down to a crawl. So we're launching 41.2, 41.3 rockets per minute out of a total of 60 possible. So not bad. But production has nearly stopped because we're running into one of those problems. These guys? All right, what's wrong with these guys? It's in the middle. Titanium bars. All right, well, let's just quickly fix this problem, and then we'll dive into the other solar system. And this is where the problem's gonna be. I've actually ran into a quite a few problems so far, and really just winds up being something here where there's like a little bottleneck. Like we don't have enough smelters or we don't have enough drones or we don't have enough interstellar stations. So it's looking like the problem here is steel. I pretty much can guarantee we just don't have enough steel smelters. 
We always have enough iron. We always have enough material. Like we have solar systems of material. We're fine there. Uh oh. Hold up. My iron. Hello? Where's my iron? My iron ingots. Okay, actually, it's looking like we just need more smelters, yeah? Yeah, we just need more smelters. Yeah, like I said, it's usually something pretty simple. Yep, and after a quick fix, we literally have so much freaking titanium alloy that we can't even ship it out fast enough. Crazy! And now, we can get to automating the new system. So, like mentioned earlier, we're gonna be doing pretty much everything on this planet over here. Because as we found out, all the resources are here, along with those sulfuric acid lakes. And yeah, we'll just kind of get to harvesting as we do. And in a few short hours, a new world falls under the control of the great Kibdonian Empire. And I got a bunch of processing ready to go as well. All we gotta do is turn it on. And brother, we're gonna have the power. Let me tell you. All we gotta do is hook up the antimatter and watch the stars come to life. <laughs> that is so cool, and man, it's fun conquering worlds. And also, I really hope that's enough power. <laughs> We're making more power with these suns than we are with our Dyson Sphere. Ah, uh, yeah, that's the good stuff. Oh, but this is a little anticlimactic. As I was building things, I was building wind farms all over the place because that's just how I connect the power when I'm just doing these things. And everything actually is already filled up and is ready to go, so no machines all mass turning on at once. So that's unfortunate. I'm sure we have enough power there, though, so we are fine. That means we can move on to production. And this is where things get a little weird. Number one, we're kind of running out of planet, but that's okay. We'll build the main factory over here for the rockets and kind of just figure out what we need. So for example, we start up at the top here with the rockets, the final product, then we'll work our way down. Yeah, it's gonna be the rockets. This will be the components then the free material, and then some solar sails, and I'm sure you get the picture now. And oh my gosh, but I didn't get the full picture, brother. <laughs> this is, oh man, it's gonna be a bit of a race to see if our little factory back home is gonna beat us to building the Dyson Sphere, cause wow, there's a lot to do. Really, really, really big process here. And this isn't even oil. We have to do another setup for oil. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is gonna be a spicy boy. All right, but this is the entirety of all the machines we need to make the rockets aside from oil. So we need oil. Where's the oil? Well, I know there's an oil world around here somewhere. We had that water world, right? This one. Yeah, yeah. There's our little oil platform. Hello. <laughs> Just skipping our mech across the sea, the infinite ocean. And let's see where that oil is. Crude oil seep, hello, hello. I presume this works the same as it did with the other resources. Just make a platform. There we go. Okay, well that means I'm gonna have to go around this entire planet and place down platforms and do the same thing we just did to that other world. Okay, not bad. It'll probably only take a boop. So yeah, it wasn't too bad with the suns and stuff, but oh my gosh, this poor world. It, it looks so hideous now. It was a beautiful, pristine little marble, and then... Ugh, why do they have to have oil? Why do they have to have oil of all the resources? You know I can't resist. Okay, but we got it all here now. Got the world powered up with more stars, and oil, water, and that silicone spin stuff. Yeah, we got everything from this planet. Meaning that we can go ahead and start our oil setup. And honestly, it's not gonna be that crazy because we already have sulfuric acid. We already have that spin form stuff and that spin form stuff allows us to make the carbon nanotubes super, super easy. It's like a one-to-one. -one. We also have fire ice. So that means we have graphene all over the place. And really all we have to do with oil is make these organic crystals. 
because the organic crystals lead to the titanium ones, the titanium ones lead to the pink ones, they lead to the plane filters, and finally the plane filters lead to the quantum chip. But you know, before we do all of that, let's see if we can check on our Dyson Sphere. It's been a couple hours, so let's see what's going on. Cappa Delfini, looking, oh my god. <laughs> We're literally in a race with our existing setup. It is working quite well. And also setting up an entire solar system takes a little bit of time, so <laughs> we are moving and we are grooving. Look at all those rockets being launched. Freaking Kappa Delphini 1, literally a missile platform. Okay, and you know what? I just had to fly back here. This is just too incredible not to see. I wonder if we can fly through it. <laughs> Oh, please don't break. Oh my! Ah! So much light. Help. Help. Actually, don't help. This is beautiful. Hello, star. What up, yo? This is crazy. This game was made by five people. You know that? Isn't that insane? How did they do this? How? All right, uh, main thing is though, I wanted to go and see if we could see how many rockets we needed to finish the spear off. I don't think it's, actually, I just honestly have no idea. I feel like we're halfway done though. So, Mr. Rocket thing, what do you say, Rocket Man? We are over halfway, fantastic. Let's see here, and then if we go to this, yeah, we're still launching rockets at about the same speed, and then solar sails, yeah, we're launching quite a few of them. I actually don't know how many solar sails we need for this thing, but it's probably in the millions. It looks like we're actually overproducing solar sails right now, and they're just ending up hovering around the star. But I'm happy to see we're making progress. Jumping back to our other production system though, we have more worlds to still harvest, like this gas giant. Why is your deuterium not mine? Gib? Gib. And then we have this lonely little ice world over here. Well, guess what? You're about to get booped as well. Well, only a little boop. All I really want from here is the fire ice, and then I decided to grab a little bit of silicone too, cause why not? Anyway, sons, go power the world so we can get to the raid boss of building all the oil stuff. And really, it's just gonna be a ton of chemical plants. We need a billion of these. Cause not only do we need those organic crystals I mentioned earlier, but we need to use these chemical plants to turn the fire ice into graphene and also to make the spin form stuff into carbon nanotubes. So we'll have, I don't know, maybe one, two rows of these guys and then pff, as far as the eye can see, chemical plants. Like that's kind of the craziest thing about this game. I'm never being sarcastic. I mean like chemical plants as far as the eye can see. Hundreds, almost like 500 here, building all of the chemical stuff that we need. So. All the crystals, good to go. Processing has started, and we're getting the pink crystals online too. Which means we're pretty much at deuterium. And wait, if we're at deuterium, if we have all the oil done now, and we have all the other resources, we are actually pretty much ready to go. All we have to do is expand each of these systems just a little bit, and then they'll flow into each other and make the rockets. Oh wait, no, no. No, I forgot. The super magnets. One of the greatest memes in this game because the super magnetic rings need the magnetic turbines, which need the motors, which need these, and it's like a whole nine yards. Just more copying and pasting until it is done. So let's get the party started. Oil is running, plastic online. Circuit boards are online and drones are a flying which means we have gold chips and our blue chips are now complete. And with the raid boss out of the way, all we had to do was copy and paste the other systems. And that leads to the Dyson Sphere components getting online. And since we already automated the deuterium, that means our glorious rockets are already online. We've done it. A new factory world is complete. And the last thing to do was just to push the rockets to their limit and now, we're making 780 rockets per minute. <laughs> so our whole old solar system could make about 40. And now we're making 780. 
a minute. But it also means we're done here. Goodbye, new factory world. And so long, my little bees. But now we're back in the Kappa Delphini system. And our Dyson Sphere is looking good. And the rockets, they be a flying. So I sent them all over from the other solar system to here. And dude, this freaking planet is popping off. There's rockets going everywhere, dude. It is awesome. In fact, we needed to build even more rocket silos because this just couldn't keep up. We're making 780 per minute. So I built a whole new rocket launching area right over here. Still, I don't think this can keep up, but <laughs> it's better. So how close are we now? Still another 10,000 away. Oh, we're out of power? Who would have guessed launching hundreds of rockets per minute would cause a power issue? No biggie though, we'll just fix that with artificial suns, and then we'll just wait on this to finish. But in the meantime, making the Dyson Sphere is not our only objective. We must beat the video game. So, we also need universe matrixes. So with these, we can get the mission complete unlock, which is just a GG you win. So I've traveled back to our home world and I let the science run and we have unlocked the universe matrixes so we can build them now. And what they take is every other matrix core and some antimatter stuff. Okay, and this is our science area. But now we have to figure out what the heck past Kibbs was doing here. He had a plan. It looks like I've planned for white science production, but how? What is this, what is going on? Purple's here, but we have purple there. That doesn't make any sense. What is this supposed to be? Or wait a second, wait a second. The tower, it holds the answer. This is going to demand the antimatter. Then the antimatter goes this way and everything goes into this tower, meaning everything over here goes into this tower? It has to. Yeah, <gasps> oh, past Kibbs was actually a genius. This is where we make the white science. It was here the whole time. Bruh. So, okay, so that's where we make the white science. I even have a bin prepared for it. Dude, dude, <laughs> Mr. Bass Gibbs. You shouldn't have. What a freaking smarty pants. All right, let's set that to that. And then what's all this for? Is this for research? Oh, this is for every other research aside from like white science. And then the ones at the end are for the white science research. It all makes sense now. Well done, past kids. So now it's just a waiting game. All we have left is for the sphere to be done. And tech wise, we just need 4,000 science cubes. Cool. Well, you know what? There is something I've always wanted to do in this whole playthrough here. And that is I want to visit a black hole. We haven't done it yet. And my God, we're going to do it now. Got plenty of time. Sure, there's one. Yep, it's literally right there. 20 light years away. What's that? A neutron star? That's pretty freaking wild, brother. But not as wild as a black hole. We're heading over. We have all the antimatter fuel we'll ever need. We have warp drives out the wazoo. Let's just freaking go. And what's going on? I can't see anything. Where's the black hole? Oh, there it is. We're closing in. Oh, I hope this thing looks cool. It's not literally just a, like a black hole. Oh, oh, and there's a planet around it. Oh my gosh. That is incredible. This is far cooler than I ever expected. Okay, one last thing. We have to try flying into it. Now this should destroy our mech. Like there's no escaping a black hole but we don't care. <laughs> We're going in. After 140 hours, let's check it out. Whoa. It's pretty dark in here. <laughs> Whoa, dude. Oh, that's so cool. It's bending the light around us and it's causing it to go up. Whoa, dude. That's, um, ah. this game is so cool. Oh, and we can just escape as well? Oh, heck yeah, bud. Okay. I didn't honestly think we could, like, die, but... That would've been funny. <laughs> After all we've done. 
Okay, we can actually escape, right? Oh yeah, no biggie. Well, that's one of the last things I wanted to check out in this game. So now we just have to wait for our Dyson Sphere in science. Oh, back home though, let's see how the science is doing. Wow, the science is absolutely done. We have an entire box full. <laughs> awesome. So now at any point in time, we can click the beat the game button. But I want to have the Dyson Sphere complete first. And it doesn't look like we have to wait long. And after 30 hours of work and one new solar system factory, our Dyson Sphere is finally complete. It's done. 17.4 gigawatts of power. No announcement, really though? We just built a Dyson Sphere. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, it's fine without the announcement. That is so cool. Let's check out inside the sphere. This is gonna look so weird. Whoa! <laughs> wow. Entire star has been converted into a power plant. This is something else. Oh wow. And then when you get up close, it's you just you just kinda see the scale of it. It's it's unbelievable. Unfortunately you can't land on it, but get that kind of makes sense. Okay though. That leaves one last thing to do, and that is win the video game. Lack of research items, I'm sorry, what? Oh, whoops, I just forgot to empty the last bin here. All right, so connected the belt, empty the bin, and victory is at hand. Only a few seconds left now. I'm so happy there's a noise for that. Congratulations. Builder of great civilizations. The primary mission of the Dyson Sphere program has been successfully completed with your efforts. The energy you provided is bound to make the homeland develop with high speed, and your figure will imprint with every step forward. This cluster has been activated. To remember your achievements, people light up a star in the Milky Way star map. Yes, it will always record your contribution to the forthcoming third level civilization. Now please rest a while, and then embark on the journey of the Sea of Stars again. Ah, <sighs> what an absolutely incredible game. And I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. We will probably revisit this game again later in its development. And now that I kind of know the basics of the game, oh bud, we can scale out a control. However though, for now, that is gonna be all for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and thank you for watching. But have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye